Hello folks, Inazuma is a few days away, or it might be out by the time you are watching this, and there are plenty of chances to spend our hard earned Primo Gems. Before you give in to temptation, let's take a quick look at what's coming soon, and what's coming really soon. Within the next few months, we should be getting a bunch of new characters that we saw in the Inazuma trailer, with a nice spread of male and female cast. If you are aiming for a specific waifu or husbando, then save up for them when they arrive. If you are more into the meta or getting a stronger team to make the game easier, then check out the impressions of the newcomers before instantly pulling. So let's dive right into the newest of the newcomers. Even though she was in the Genshin closed beta test over a year ago, Ayaka Kamisaro. Ayaka is looking to be a strong main DPS. Some people are calling her melee Ganyu, but I don't think Ayaka is that overpowered. Both of them will be primarily dealing cryo damage, but Ayaka doesn't seem to have the same AoE potential as Ganyu, especially if her elemental burst requires 80 energy when she launches. Ayaka's main playstyle will be using her normal and charge attacks after dashing. That's because her dash will infuse her normal attacks with cryo for a short time. I also want to talk about the dash real quick. It has the same style as Mona's dash, but with faster recovery. One of the biggest problems with Mona is how long the dash animation takes. I'm not sure if Ayaka is just built different, or if Mihoyo is permanently changing this style of dashing and stealth buff Mona in the 2.0 update. Anyways, back to Ayaka and cryo damage. With all the cryo infusions, one of her best teams will be the popular freeze comps. Doubly so, since her ascension stat is critical damage, and freeze with Blizzard Strayer gives a huge chunk of crit rate. Ayaka will be a strong cryo DPS for sure, just probably not as overpowered as Ganyu in the end. Now, the other rate up. Yanfei is a great pyro main DPS. In my opinion, she is the best 4 star pyro that can take advantage of Shang Cho's vaporized reactions. Her animations are smooth, she feels great to play, and you don't need to worry about animation cancelling to optimize her damage. If you don't have Klee, Diluc, or Hu Tao, then Yanfei is an excellent replacement that still does a bunch of damage. Then you have another powerhouse 4 star, Ningguang. Her damage matches that of a 5 star once she reaches Constellation 6. Being Geo, she is equally strong against most enemy types, and with all the Geo damage buffs from the previous patches, along with the fix to her attack animation, Ningguang will always be a strong DPS for any team. Then there's Chongyun. He is a great support that provides a unique cryo infusion to your main DPS. His Constellation 2 also reduces your team's cooldowns, bumping up his strength as a support. You can also build him as a DPS, though there are plenty of other Claymore users that fit that DPS role better. We are also getting a free beta in case you really need a Claymore unit to help mine those ores. To sum up the character banner, it's a great one to buff your account. If you don't have a 5 star pyro DPS, then Yanfei is a great addition. If you don't have any decent main DPS at all, then both Ayaka and Ningguang are both top tier choices for any account. This is a strong banner that is launching with Inuzuma, but I'm not sure how much of this is bait to get players to spend all their primo gems and not have enough for the back end. Since we know the next banner is gonna have Yomiya and Sayu, and if you are not interested in an upgraded Amber, then go ahead and pull on this banner and start saving up for the characters in the coming months. We should be getting more primo gems than normal months since there's a new area to explore, plus the 1 year anniversary is coming soon. Now a quick review of the weapon banner. The mist splitter is going to be Ayaka's best in slot, no questions asked. It will also be one of the best weapons for any sword unit that focuses on elemental damage. There isn't that many sword wielding main DPS that mostly does elemental damage though. We have Ayaka and Electro Kuching who can infuse their normal attacks to become elemental. I guess if you have a Chongyun support, then any sword user can take advantage of the Mist Splitter, but that will begin restricting your team choices. Then there's the rare Constellation 6 Bennett main DPS, who I still do not recommend since the Pyro Infusion can ruin a lot of team comps. Regardless, the Mist Splitter is the best sword for Ayaka and Electro Kuching, and decent for other main DPS. For the Skyward Spine, I don't recommend it. It's nice to have for any support, but it's not worth it for a 5 star weapon. 
The new pity system for the 5 star weapons won't help low spenders either since you need to pull a total of 3 5 star weapons on the same banner to utilize the pity. And the 4 star weapons aren't great. It's all the Favonius weapons plus a stringless. The stringless is the only decent one here. Unless you have plenty of extra primo gems to spend on Ayaka's sword, then don't pull on this weapon banner. Keep in mind that Ayaka has a decent amount of weapon choices that are still good on her. And that's my reveal this time around. Just remember, there are plenty of new characters demanding our primo gems soon, so try not to spend it all right away. Thanks for watching, and as always, have fun out there, traveler.